Hello everyone, I am Shantan and I will be talking on improving energy efficiency using successively reordered transmissions and feedback. This has been a joint work with Nilesh Vimeta. We are both at Next Generation Wireless Systems Lab, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. This is an extended version of the talk which I have presented in Globecom 2021. First, I will motivate on the problem of energy efficient distributed detection in wireless sensor networks. Then I will give a brief background study on the order transmission scheme. Then I will talk about our contributions that is the feedback enhanced successively reordered transmission scheme. We will do a performance evolution of both the schemes and then I will conclude. Let me set up the context. We have taken a binary hypothesis testing problem which is a fundamental problem in signal detection theory. It has a major application in target detection, spectrum sensing, biometric detection, etc. In this problem, there exists two hypotheses, H1 and H0. H1 indicates the target to be present in case of target detection or the primary signal to be present in case of spectrum sensing. Whereas H0 indicates the target is absent or the primary signal is absent. The basic setup here is that there are n geometrically separated nodes. Node i has a measurement of yi and the goal is that the fusion node or the data aggregator should declare which hypothesis has happened on the basis of this measurement available at the nodes. And we wanted to do this in as efficient manner as possible. In the Bayesian detection framework, the goal is to minimize the probability of error. The error optimal decision rule is as follows. Every node computes its log likelihood ratio or LLR and the error optimal rule adds the LLRs up, compares it to a threshold beta. If it is more than beta, declare H1. If it is less than beta, declare H0. Beta here is a constant which depends on the prior probability of the hypothesis. The LLR of node i is defined as the logarithm of the ratio of conditional densities of measurement yi given the hypothesis h1 to h0. Since the nodes are geographically separated, one way to implement this rule is by making all the nodes send their LLRs to the fusion node, which then can add them up and declare on a hypothesis. We will call this the unordered transmission scheme. In the previous slide, we see that all nodes have to transmit in order to make a decision. However, it has been shown in the literature that you can get away with fewer transmissions. This was shown by the order transmission scheme. The key idea is the nodes transmit in decreasing order of their absolute value of LLR. I will illustrate this with an example. Consider a sensor network consisting of four nodes. Indexed as 1, 3, 4. The LLRs are ordered as follows. Absolute value of L1 is more than absolute value of L2. Is more than absolute value of L2. Is more than absolute value of L2. Then according to OTX, the first step, L1 is transmitted to the fusion node. The fusion node tries to decide using this L1. If L1 is more than this upper threshold, then fusion node declares H1. If it is less than this lower threshold, then fusion node declares H0. And if it is in between the thresholds, then the fusion node waits for the next transmission to happen. The thresholds depend on the last transmitted LLR to the fusion node, which in this case is L1 itself. In the next step, L3 is transmitted to the fusion node. Now the sum LLR L1 plus L3, if it is more than this updated upper threshold, then Fusion node declares H1. If it is less than this updated lower threshold, then fusion node declares H0. And if it is in between the thresholds, the fusion node waits for the next transmission. In this way, the nodes continue to transmit their descending order of the absolute value of LLR until Fn decides. It has been proved in the literature that OTS saves 50% of the transmissions, yet it achieves the optimal error probability, same as the unordered transmission scheme.
OTS requires the nodes to transmit in decreasing order of the rational value of LLR. Since the nodes are separated from each other, no node knows any other nodes LLR. Then how can one implement this? It turns out one can do this using a distributed timer scheme. And here is the timer scheme. Each node sets a timer depending on a local number called a matrix. For OTS, the matrix is absolute value of Li for node i. And the node transmits the packet when its timer expires. The key idea is the matrix to timer mapping is monotonically non-increasing function. Hence, the node with the largest matrix transmits first. In a previous example, the node 1 having the highest metric axial value of L1 has the lowest timer value, so it expires first and hence the node transmits first. We propose a novel feedback enhanced successively reorder transmission scheme that is feedback and changes the order of the transmission based on the feedback. The scheme requires markedly fewer average number of transmissions than both OTS and UTS, whereas it achieves the optimal error probability same as UTS. Let us move on to the transmission policy design of our scheme FESRTS. I will illustrate this with an example. Consider a sensor network consisting of four nodes indexed as one. 2, 3, and 4. Their LLRs are ordered as follows. L1 is more than L2, is more than L3, is more than L4. And L1 has the largest absolute value. Then, in step 1, node i sets its matrix as absolute value of Li. As a result, Node 1 having largest matrix transmits LLR to the fusion node using the timer scheme. The fusion node tries to decide using this L1. If it decides, the process terminates and we get the decision in a single transmission. If it doesn't decide, it broadcasts L1 to all nodes as a feedback. In step 2, node i sets its matrix as absolute value of Li minus the feedback L1. As a result, node 4 having the largest matrix transmits its LLR L4, the fusion node. The fusion node again tries to decide using L1 and L4. If it decides, the process terminates and we get the decision in two transmissions instead of four. If it doesn't decide, then fusion node broadcasts L4 to all nodes as a feedback. Subsequently, in step three, the node I sets its matrix as absolute value of Li minus the feedback L4. As a result of the timer scheme, node 2 transmits L2 and Fn again tries to decide. In this way, the process continues till Fn decides. Now let me get into the design of the decision loop based on which the fusion node terminates at a particular step. This is really the heart of the problem. To define decision rule, let me set up the order notation. I will denote the index of node that transmits at step k to be square bracket k. From the previous example, square bracket 1 is 1, square bracket 2, which has the LLR farthest away from L1, is 4, square bracket 3, which has the LLR farthest away from 4 is 2 and subsequently square bracket 4 is 3. Now we prove the following property in the paper. Suppose 
even number of transmissions have occurred <coughs> that is k is even then the llrs those are yet to transmit that is li a square bracket i for i between k plus 1 to n lies between l square bracket k and l square bracket k minus 1. for example suppose k equal to 2 then for any llr i more than 2 that is l square bracket 3 lies between l square bracket 2 and l square bracket 1. the similar inequalities can be shown for the odd number transmissions as well using this lemma we come up with the following decision rule for before that recall the optimal decision rule is sum all the llrs compared it to the threshold beta if it is more than beta declare h1 if it is less than beta declare h0 now let me call the l square bracket k to be the kth best llr consider an example that the first best llr is positive then after the first node has transmitted to the fusion node the fusion node has access to the first best llr which indeed has the greatest absolute value using this fact we can bound the kth best llr as follows for k more than equal to 2 and hence we can bound the sum llr across all the nodes if the upper bound of the sum llr is less than beta then the fusion node can safely declare at zero if the lower bound of the sum llr is more than beta then the fusion node can safely declare h1 using this fact the fusion node comes up with the following thresholds if it is more than the upper threshold declare h1 if it is less than the lower threshold declare h0 and if first base LLR lies in between the thresholds then the fusion node waits for the next transmission to happen subsequently in the next step using the previous lemma we can bound the kth best llr in between the second best llr and the first best llr as follows for k more than or equal to 3 and following the previous logic we bound the sum llr and from that the fn decides using the following thresholds if the sum llr at the fn that is the first best llr plus the second best llr which is more than the upper threshold fn declares h1 if it is less than the lower threshold fn declares h0 if l1 plus l2 lies in between the thresholds then the fusion node waits for the next transmission with this logic one can formally state the decision rules for any step k we have shown that on this slide i will not explain this in for the interest of time they are given in the paper let us move on to the performance evaluation of the schemes first we benchmark the average number of transmissions we consider the shift in variance problem in this problem the h0 has a variance of sigma 0 square and h1 has a signal component present hence its variance increases to sigma 0 square plus sigma s square i have plotted average number of transmissions as a function of signal to noise ratio in db where the signal to noise ratio is a ratio between sigma s square and sigma 0 square we have plotted three schemes in black is the fes rts in blue is the ots and in red is the uts for 20 number of sensors in the network for uts all the nodes required to transmit to the fusion node in order to make a decision hence the average number of transmissions for uts is flat and it's exactly equal to 20. at large snr for fes rts the number of transmissions decreases to 2. For all the SNRs, 
FESRTS requires markedly fewer transmissions than both OTS and UTS. It does so while achieving the optimal error probability same as UTS. Now we benchmark the energy efficiency. Let me define energy efficiency. It's the ratio of average energy consumed by the unordered scheme to average energy consumed by the ordered scheme. In fact, we can show that it reduces to ratio between number of sensors in a network and average number of transmissions required by the order scheme. I have plotted energy efficiency as a function of number of sensors in the network for SNR equal to 30 dB for three schemes. In red is the FES RTS, in black is the UTS, and in blue is the OTS. At large SNR, FES RTS energy efficiency is proportional to the number of sensors in the network. For OTS, the energy efficiency is saturated is close to 2, and for UTS, the energy efficiency is equal to indeed 1. Let us see the effect of prior probability on detection performance of two schemes, OTS and FES RTS, for two different SNRs. I have plotted average number of transmissions as a function of prior probability of hypothesis H1, that is zeta 1. For SNR equal to 5 dB in red and for SNR equal to 30 dB in black, we see that the average number of transmissions increases with zeta 1, reaches a peak and then decreases for OTS. The similar behavior is captured for FES RTS, though the variation is smaller compared to OTS. This can be explained as follows. Before that, let me call the node which transmits at step K of OTS and first back at K. And also, the constant beta decreases as zeta 1 increases. Now let us look at the deletion rule for the kth step of OTS. The fusion node has access to first k LLRs. And if the sum LLR is more than this upper threshold, OTS declares H1. If it is less than this lower thresholds, OTS declares as 0. If it is in between the thresholds, the fusion node waits for the next transmission to happen. So as zeta 1 increases, beta decreases, and the thresholds are updated. Now we see that the probability that the sum LLR is more than this upper threshold increases. Hence, declaring H1 has a higher odds as beta decreases. On the other side, the lower threshold decreases as beta decreases, hence declaring at zero has a lower odd compared to previous beta as beta decreases. And this really explains the behavior of the curves shown in the figure. Let me summarize. We developed distributed detection scheme called FES RTS that uses feedback. We also designed novel decision rules such that FES RTS requires markedly fewer transmissions compared to both OTS and UTS, while it achieves optimal error probability same as UTS. Hence, FES RTS is much more energy efficient compared to both OTS and UTS. And the energy efficiency is proportional to number of nodes for higher SNRs. An interesting avenue for future work is modeling and accounting for the quantization of LLR during transmission. Thank you.